When it comes to the true Viking experience, look no further than the Bear Tree, filled with skills designed to make you the most deadly warrior on the battlefield. Hey there friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today we gear up and take a deep dive into the Bear Tree in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. If you're new to the way skills work in Valhalla, let me give you an overview. Throughout your adventures, you'll gain skill points for nearly everything you do, from questing to looting, and those skill points can be used to allocate points into a sprawling skill tree. Minor nodes increase things like weapon potency or your ability to resist attacks, while major nodes fundamentally change the way you experience elements of the game. Today, let's talk about the Bear Tree, which is designed primarily around melee combat. The Bear Tree, more than any others, pushes players towards a particular playstyle, but that doesn't mean you can't experiment with other skills. In fact, finding a way to blend skills from all three trees will guarantee you have a good time playing the game. Now, instead of telling you which skill is good or bad, because let's be honest, that kind of subjective nonsense is just stupid, I'd rather share where and when these enhancements could be useful, and we'll start with the very first major node, Stomp. It doesn't get more brutal than Stomp, a straightforward damage dealing move that decimates opponents that get knocked to the ground. This is the bread and butter of the Bear Tree, but it's a skill worth picking up no matter what specialization you decide to go for. Because Stomp doesn't require any resources, it's free damage, and that makes it incredibly potent. There's also no restrictions on who can get Stomp, so feel free to cave in the skulls of any enemies that happen to fall at your feet. No matter how you feel about the combat in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's hard to argue that the dual wield system isn't a nice change of pace. The dual swap skill allows you to take that idea to the next level and gives you the flexibility to swap the weapons in your main and offhand at the push of a button. What this really does is gives you access to the special ability assigned to the offhand weapon. For most weapons, this is driven by a player's stamina and almost always inflicts an insane amount of damage. I would highly recommend you at least try each of these weapons in your offhand to determine what you like best. You might be surprised at what you like. Each weapon's special attack functions differently, so it's worth experimenting with. Since we're talking about dual wielding, it makes sense to talk about heavy dual wield, a major node at the end of the left side of the bear skill tree. This allows you to use two-handed weapons as one-handers, and it's easily one of the best additions to combat in Assassin's Creed. With beefier weapons comes a beefier playstyle, so if you're looking for more damage and less finesse, this is the perfect skill for you. I will admit on a personal level that I had the most fun playing with this talent active. Using two massive weapons isn't something a lot of games have experimented with, and I think Ubisoft does a good job making it accessible to everyone. The combat feels different when wielding two two-handers, and it's a great change of pace for anyone looking to mix up their time in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Easily one of the most noob-friendly skills in the game, Berserker's Metal ensures that your hard-earned adrenaline that powers your abilities don't disappear when you get hit by an enemy. It's important to understand that this doesn't protect you outright, but will protect you from the first strike from an opponent. As a warrior, you'll be stringing together plenty of attacks, filling up those adrenaline bars left and right, so it's nice that the game gives you a little cushion considering you'll be knee-deep in enemies more often than not. I should point out that this only protects partially filled adrenaline bars. Bars that have already been completed are safe and can be used at your discretion. If we head back towards the center of the bear tree, we run into perfect hit, and I'll be honest, this one is one of those skills that sounds cool, but really doesn't change too much. In theory, if you tap your light attack button a second time during a swing, your next attack should do more damage, but it's hard to tell if this is actually doing anything. There's no indication, as far as I can tell, that you've executed this properly. I think the idea of this skill is cool, and if it works, great, because I'm not going to pass up extra damage. I just wish there was some more thought put into how this skill was showcased. It's obviously worth picking up, but I think people should know it's not exactly cut and dry. If you thought the bear tree was just about swinging axes in people's faces, well, the light bow would like to have a word. Light bow combo is a great skill that increases the damage of consecutive attacks from a light bow. If you've never used a light bow before, seriously, check them out. It's the machine gun of the Viking world and allows you to put a lot of arrows down range. Obviously, with increased speed, you sacrifice damage, but this skill helps bridge that gap. The light bow functions incredibly well in close quarters and creates a great synergy with melee combat, so don't sneeze at this skill and give it a try. If bold and brash is what you're looking for out of your combat, then look no further than Warrior Takedown, which gives you the ability to assassinate targets, but with a bit more bravado. 
Instead of a stealthy knife to the heart, you'll chop off a head or gut an enemy outright, alerting other enemies nearby. But this will fill your adrenaline meter for every one of those alerted foes. This is a fantastic way to kickstart combat as it puts you in immediate striking distance with your most powerful abilities. Warrior Takedown almost always succeeds against lesser enemies, so focus on them. It's not really the kill you care about, it's the adrenaline you get for the kill. It's a great skill and perfectly fits the warrior theme of the bear tree. On paper, terror is a cool idea. In fact, if my memory is serving me correctly, it's been done before in Assassin's Creed games. The idea is that after a stun attack, weaker enemies will cower in fear. But to be completely honest with you all, I've never actually seen this work. I don't know if the tuning is just way off, but no matter how many stun kills I have on enemies, everyone else just continues trying to kill me. If you're thinking about putting points into something, I'd honestly stay away. There just doesn't seem to be any real value here. If it had a higher chance of success, the effect would be decent. Enemies that can't move are easy targets, but at this point, I can't recommend or even suggest that you check out this skill, as it seems to be a complete dud. Battlefield Cremation is a skill any pyro will love, and if you haven't reached a certain point in the game, you may not see the value of this skill outright. This skill extends how long a body burns after they've been killed by a fire skill. There are a number of items and set bonuses that have fire effects baked in, but if you want to see it in practice, just whip out a torch and start swinging it around. The real catch-22 here is that other enemies have to come in contact with the bodies that are already burning, and this isn't always the easiest task. Luckily, in a big fight, watching enemies burn to a crisp is pretty satisfying, and in the late game, it's just wicked. Sprint Bash is one of those skills I think could have been replaced with something a bit more exciting. The ability to break through objects and push down NPCs is hard to pull off organically and almost always ends up being more of a pain than anything else. Unlike Sprint Attack in the Wolf Tree, Sprint Bash just doesn't have that same impact. It's almost impossible to pull off in the heat of battle, and its use outside of battle is niche at best. This is definitely one of the weakest skills across the entire three skill trees, but by all means check it out for yourself and form your own opinion. A straight up passive damage boost, Adrenaline Fiend is a must grab for anyone exploring the bear tree. This skill gives you a blanket damage boost depending on the number of filled adrenaline bars you have. This means that it's essential to unlock all of the other adrenaline bars across the raven and wolf trees to maximize the effects of this skill. That's not a challenging feat considering that by the mid game you'll have around 200 points to spend, but remember you have to have these bars filled for the effect to take hold. If you're in the habit of getting adrenaline and immediately spending it, this is going to provide you with no real value. But if you're like me and rely on a combination of basic attacks, ranged attacks, and abilities, then it'll pay off big during a fight. There's nothing really to say about parry damage. This skill increases the damage retribution done to enemies when you parry their attacks. It's a no-brainer and gives you more incentive to parry, which is something you should actively be doing anyways. There's nothing wrong with dodging, but mastering the parry is at the core of a good Assassin's Creed Valhalla experience, so take this skill and practice your parries. Our final skill is Arrow Volley, which taps into the light bow once again. The skill fires all five arrows at once, giving you a nice buckshot style attack that does increase damage at the cost of using five arrows. It's a nice way to elevate the light bow, which is already pretty decent. If you're someone that likes to swap in and out of ranged combat, this is a must have as the extra damage is great at taking down enemies and the slight spread almost always makes it easier to hit weak points. As someone partial to ranged style play, I find this to be a fantastic talent and never fails to come in clutch during combat. Like most of the skills in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the bear skills work best when synergized with other skills across the raven and wolf trees. The real star of the bear tree is the heavy dual-wield skill, which completely brings combat to another level. Overall, I think this is one of the better skill trees in the game, and provides a lot more value than the wolf tree across the board. Now, if you haven't had the chance to check out our wolf tree video, definitely give that a watch, and keep an eye out for our raven skill tree video dropping soon. But that's enough of that, it's time to talk about what you think. Share your thoughts about the bear tree in the comment section below, chime in with what your favorite skill is in the game, and don't forget while you're down there to like the video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.